Greetings, fellow freedom spreaders. Supreme Star Marshal Fallout here, and I've got 13 advanced tips and tricks for you to use in Helldivers 2. And before we get going, here's a free tip. Stop killing your fucking teammates. Resources and currency gathered in Helldivers 2 is shared. I feel like the game tells you that multiple times, but there's still a ton of players out there apparently trying to team kill and grab super samples or whatever for themselves. Not only is that not a thing, but it's unpatriotic behavior and traitors should be both reported and sent away for re-education, the more you know. Anyway, moving on. Tip number one, use the railgun in unsafe mode. Now I know you're not scared about doing that, right? Because as a hell diver, that would be cowardice, aka treason. And if you're looking to dish out the maximum amount of damage and democracy, it's unsafe mode all the way. For the uninitiated, the railgun default fire mode is safe, where you can charge up your shot forever and nothing bad will happen to you, but your max damage output will be lower. Unsafe mode gives you the ability to fire more powerful shots at the minor downside of potentially killing yourself if you hold down your charge shot for too long. I've done some testing and it seems like the max amount you can charge a railgun shot for is exactly three seconds, even at one frame longer and you will explode and die. Now I don't expect you to be counting out loud each time you shoot your freaking gun, but the more you use the unsafe railgun, the more you'll get a feel for the timing of when you should release your shot. Currently, the railgun is one of, if not the single strongest weapon in the entire game, so squeezing extra damage out of every shot is the play. Tip number two, where and how to find super samples. Upgrading your ship module gives you better and stronger stratagems. Earlier upgrades only require common and rare samples, but the best end game level upgrades all require super samples, making them extremely valuable. Here's the deal there. Super samples can only be found on missions where the difficulty is at minimum seven, AKA suicide mission. And super samples are not scattered around the map. Wherever they are, all super samples available on the map will always be found only in one location. Meaning if you've found one super sample, keep looking around because you've basically just found all of them. Super samples are currently not found in bunkers or ships or anything like that. They are always found directly underneath a big weird shaped rock that looks like this. Kinda oddly shaped and top heavy, my fire team usually calls it the dick rock. Don't ask. So while out and about on a seven difficulty mission or higher, always be scanning the horizon for the dick rock. Annoyingly, sometimes the dick rock can be blended together with other rocks, making it a tad harder to find. But the more you play, the better you'll get at spotting them. And on that note, tip number three, drop samples to consolidate them. Here's something I've been doing more of lately, making sure all the samples that have been collected during the mission are going into the inventory of one player. Reason being, no more mental math or gymnastics about who was carrying what samples or anything like that in the event that somebody dies. Hold down whatever the drop button is for you to drop samples and to make sure your team has one designated sample carrier. That way, if the designated sample carrier dies, especially if they were carrying super samples, everybody now has to work together to make sure their body is recovered so 100% of the samples are all back on the menu. You do you, but I find it much easier to have a dedicated sampler holder, kind of makes you pay more attention to them getting evac'd first at the end as well. Tip number four, find the stalker nest easier. Stalkers are vicious bastards, and even though they're about as subtle as Danny DeVito stuffed into a couch, as their camo mode can clearly be seen from far away, they will straight up murder you if you let them get too close. Because of that, shutting down a stalker nest is always a high priority side objective. Fortunately for you and me, stalkers ain't clever and will usually beeline directly at you from wherever they spawn, meaning that whenever you see a stalker, immediately take note of what direction it's approaching you from and even ping the map in that direction if you need to. The smart money says that the stalker nest is in that direction and the ping will help the rest of your team get a general idea of where the nest will be, even if they don't currently see the stalker approaching you. Tip number five, change your stratagem keybinds. For the PC folk out there, your default stratagem keybinds are also set to WASD, aka your movement. And if they're not yet too deeply imprinted into your gamer brain, try to rebind them to the arrow keys instead of WASD. That way you don't have to stop moving when calling in a stratagem. You can run and punch in the code at the same time, which can be life-saving if you're getting overwhelmed. Tip number six, plan your artillery order and remember it. If you find a Seif artillery cannon out in the wild, that is huge because not only do you get extra XP for completing a side objective, but you now have another offensive stratagem to call in. There are five different kinds of shells you can load into the cannon and the types of shells you get at a Seif artillery station are all random. You can tell the types of shells apart by their color and their in-game description. You've got explosive, which has a red top. You have napalm, which is a pointy red top. You've got static field, which has a pointy blue top 
top, you have smoke, which has a yellow top, and you have mini nukes, which also have a yellow top. If I'm loading up a Seaf artillery cannon with my team, I basically always look for yellows and reds first. If the yellow is a nuke, I load it. If it's a smoke, I'd recommend saving it to be loaded later. Even though smoke bombs are helpful, I find raw damage and blowing things up to be way more effective and way more fun. Either way, when you're loading the cannon, remember the order of what you're putting in, as when you're calling in a strike, the game won't tell you what type of shell is next on the roster, you just have to remember the order that you loaded them in. Also, if there's any OG Halo fans out there who remember flag juggling, you can load the cannon faster by repeatedly dropping and picking up the shells over and over, you'll move way quicker that way. Tip number seven, spore tower info. If you're on a terminate mission, spore towers can potentially make things very foggy and hard to see. I wanna clear up a rumor I've heard here that spore towers can only be taken down with stratagems, which is not true. You can actually safely destroy spore towers from very far away with weapon fire, including the almighty railgun. Destroy it from far away if you can and don't get lost in the fog. Oh, and be aware that light fog can also indicate the presence of a lurking bile titan nearby, usually in a bug outpost, so be on the lookout. Tip number eight, bring anti-boss stratagems. In this context, I'm using the word boss to describe two things, tanks on the automaton missions and motherfucking bile titan terminids. Not having a way to deal with these damn things quickly can put you in a tight spot, so I recommend recommend one if not multiple hell divers on the team have specific options to deal with them immediately. My hard recommendations are the orbital rail cannon and the orbital laser. Both have ups and downs. The orbital laser lasts for way longer and has extremely little chance of screwing up while dealing damn good damage to the biggest target on the field. If it kills a target and has time remaining, it can move on to the other targets, which is nice. The downside of the laser is that the default cooldown time is pretty long, 300 seconds, and it has a limited number of overall uses. Uses. The orbital rail cannon is a one and done shot and the upsides are great. It'll lock on and fire almost immediately rather than dragging on like the laser. Another great upside is that the orbital rail cannon has a shorter default cooldown time, 210 seconds, and best of all, unlimited usage, which is awesome. The downsides are the rail cannon doesn't hit as hard as the laser and can't hit more than one enemy if it finishes off a target early. Between the two, I think I like the orbital rail cannon a bit more due to the faster cooldown and unlimited usage. I usually keep it in my back pocket as an instant FU card to throw at big enemies. And yeah, even if the Bile Titan isn't killed in one hit, I can just mop it up with a few overcharged shots from my regular railgun. Tip number nine, mortars make defend area missions a joke. This is becoming more and more well known, but it bears repeating. Even though high level automaton missions are damn tough, the defend area missions are a complete joke if your entire team brings both the mortar sentry and EMS mortar sentry. The mission puts you on top of a giant hill where the robots have to make their way to your position, and with all the mortars firing non-stop, they'll barely come close to reaching you even on the highest difficulty levels. If you're gonna do any automaton operation, be sure they include a defend area mission. Tip number 10, bring anti-outpost stratagems. In addition to force-feeding bile titans a fistful of democracy from orbit, you'll also want stratagems for efficiently shutting down outpost locations, aka robot spawning buildings and bug holes. Yeah, you can throw grenades into the holes or use the grenade launcher, but the former requires you to get pretty close, and the latter means you won't be able to equip the motherfucking never gonna take it off because it's so absurdly good railgun. Rail gun. And lord knows that ain't happening. Even though it's unlocked very early, the Eagle Airstrike is a rock solid option that I've been leaning on hard, even through higher difficulty levels. Again, why run into a base and get bent over by 20 robots with chainsaw arms when I can destroy their spawn from downtown with an Eagle Airstrike, then walk in and mop up whatever's left? And even though you only have three initial uses, you can just reload load your eagles and you're good to drop more. Tip number 11, use drop pods offensively. When reviving a teammate in a high difficulty mission, I want you to remember these immortal words I now come to live by. Safe or hot. If your teammate requests safe, I drop them in far away from combat as they probably want to re-gear up and things ain't that wild. If they say hot, then I throw their revive at the biggest goddamn threat on the battlefield. The plan being as they drop, they'll land right on top of the damn thing's head and kill it on the way in. Drop pods as an offensive tool works way better than you might expect, and I hard recommend players pick up the power steering upgrade from the ship module. That way, when you drop in, you have more control over where you go and you're more likely to 
crush the giant threat on the way in. Tip number 12, LFG baby. If you're a solo hell diver, God love you, or you don't have a routine fire team, you could just use the in-game quit play feature, but Lord knows what you're getting into there. Instead, you should check out the official hell divers discord channel, hashtag not an ad, as it has an LFG channel, which you can use to find like-minded fire teams as opposed to just random ones. Better to drop in with a group that are all on the same page about what the overall goal is rather than just hoping the team you're joining wants to farm super samples or whatever the heck it is that you're trying to do out there. Tip number 13, use different strategies for different enemies. Here's what I've learned after spreading freedom and liberty across both enemy factions at hell dive difficulty. My general movement and positioning is different depending on if I'm fighting bugs or bots. With bugs, I find that both nonstop movement and wide open spaces are huge for success. Bugs have a notably weak projectile game. And even though chargers are deadly out in the open, I can just stop them dead in their tracks with a railgun. Think zombie land tactics out here. Just nonstop cardio, keep running and shooting wide out in the open. With automatons though, wide open spaces are almost a death sentence. Turrets, tanks, and those little bastards with the rocket launchers will blast you a new b-hole if given a clean line of sight. I like to lead them into the jungle to obstruct their line of sight, forcing them to stop shooting and make their way to me, where I then destroy them with a breaker shotgun. 90% of the time, it works every time. If you have any advanced tips to share with your fellow democracy spreaders, be sure to share them down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>